Hello and welcome to today's Almost Daily Devotion. We're going to be in the Old Testament prophet of Ezekiel, chapter 36. We're going to start with the 16th verse, and it goes like this. The Lord's word came to me. Human one, when the house of Israel lived on their fertile land, they polluted it with their ways and deeds. Their ways before me were polluted. And so I poured out my fury on them for all the blood they had poured out on the land and for all the defilement of their idols. When I scattered them to the nations and dispersed them into other lands, I judged them according to their ways and deeds. But then when they entered the other nations, they degraded my holy name because it was said of them, These are the Lord's people, yet they had to leave his land. So I had compassion on my holy name, which the house of Israel degraded among the nations where they had gone. Therefore say to the house of Israel, The Lord God proclaims, House of Israel, I am not acting for your sake, but for the sake of my holy name, which you degraded among the nations where you have gone. I will make my great name holy, which has was degraded among the nations when you dishonored it among them. Then the nations will know that I am the Lord. This is what the Lord says. When I make myself holy among you in their sight, I will take you from the nations. I will gather you from all the countries, and I will bring you to your own fertile land. I will sprinkle clean water on you, and you will be cleansed of all your pollution. I will cleanse you of all your idols. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. I will remove your stony heart from your body and replace it with a living one. And I will give you my spirit so that you may walk according to my regulations and carefully observe my laws. So this is a little bit of an oops. <laughs> this is a little bit of God admitting to an oops, to a mistake. And it's hard for us to think about God making a mistake, but I think God makes decisions thinking that we're going to react one way and us human beings to defy that or beguile or thwart God's good intentions. And it's anyone who's had children knows how that goes, that you make decisions for your children thinking they're going to do one thing and then they do something completely befuddling. <laughs> this is sort of God's experience of that. You see, God sent them away from Israel. God sent them to a new land because God thought that by doing so, they would wake up. They'd come to their senses. It's a divine time out. He put Israel on the naughty step, thinking that they would ref reflect upon what they had done wrong and return uh, to God, return to their practices, return to being a holy people. Instead, what God realizes is that by allowing them to be conquered, he allowed the other countries, the other people, to think of them as weak, to think of them as unprotected by their God. And so what was intended as a punishment for their defilement was really a punishment for God, it was really something that ended up backfiring tremendously. It backfired on God. It, it led to God looking bad, looking weak, looking like God no longer chose Israel. So this is God admitting to a little bit of a mistake. And so God chooses to rectify that mistake by bringing Israel home. If the mistake was to send you away, then I'm going to bring you back. I'm going to bring you back to your homeland. I'm going to cleanse you of whatever it is that's wrong with you that causes you to make these bad choices. And you're going to come back to me because I'm going to show that I'm righteous and loyal and holy, just as I always said I was. And then you're going to restore your trust in your faith. And we know the end of that story, right? It doesn't. It does for a little bit. They come back to God for a little bit, and then they go back to being human again and making mistakes and not trusting God. So God makes a promise never to do that again. And sometimes God's acts in our lives are confusing. They don't make sense. We don't understand why God chose to do whatever God is doing. We think God should have made different choices, and it's confusing. Why? What's the point of all this? And I think it's helpful to remember that God 
hopes for us to make the right choice. God acts hoping that we're going to respond in a certain way. And when we don't, when we don't, God is always surprised. When we don't react in the way God is expecting, that always surprises God. And so what we can do through all of it is remain trustworthy and faithful. We can live into God's hope for us. We can be the people of hope that God expects us to be. And stop trying to figure out God and God's choices sometimes. We'll be much happier for it. God bless.